the Runineers, and it's Manny again, and yes, I was going to do this video yesterday, but then we had all the breaking news. I wanted to read it all before I got back to you because I didn't want to give you any misinformation. There's a lot of misinformation going around right now, guys. So guys, we're going to go and we're going to tackle everything. So we're going to try to give you the best advice possible. If you guys have any questions as usual, just post them down below. Go to the Facebook page. Message me directly, guys. It's not a problem. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it for you. I'll try to guide you where you can find the answer, guys. But before we do, as usual, guys, thank you very much. I, I said it last time, this channel has grown so much. We're almost at live, uh, almost at where we can go live, and we're almost at 900. We're gonna try to reach for 1,000. I have a feeling we'll go over 1,000 by the end of this year. And guys, it's gonna force me to go live. We're gonna have to figure out some stuff. Uh, I'm still gonna be recording the runs, guys, so hopefully, uh, and guys, we got less than two weeks, you know, less than two weeks before the expo. So guys, come up and say hello. If you want to come out on the channel, please come up and say hi when I'm recording. But uh, guys, uh, oh, a couple of things too, before I forget. We are going to be changing a little bit of what we're going to be doing. We are going to become the course encouragers. And that's one of the things that I've been doing little by little steadily. And then a group of us started running. We started doing the same thing. It, it just is growing. I think it's a great thing. We're going to be the course encouragers. We're going to encourage everybody. We just love being out there. We, we don't take it for granted, guys. Uh, so yes, um, there's things I'm working on, but as usual, guys, I won't say anything until it comes true, you know, so that way I don't want to give some misinformation, but I am working on some merchandise. And yeah, merchandise is going to be coming hopefully soon, but uh, let's get to it. So the main news is that the event digital guide has dropped, and we will get to that in a minute. But first of all, uh, we had some merchandise drop. Talking about merchandise, we had merchandise drop. So let's take a look at the merchandise. So first off, we have the teal shirts and we have the bag. These look pretty cool. They're just the regular logo that's on top of the web page. Then we got figment. We got the finisher shirts and the finisher jackets for figment. We got the 10K and the half marathon finisher shirts. One is teal and one is blue. Then we actually have the same, the emblem. We got the spirit jersey. Uh, this is a yellow colored one, but all four races are on there. And then we got some bags, uh, some unique bags. Uh, the one on the left looks like it carries everything. Then we have here, we have corksicles. We have some pins. We have some Mickey ears. And then we have a, a cap and a lounge fly. So we have a lot of different merchandise that you can look at right now. So guys, this is not it for the merchandise. So if you guys think this is going to be everything that they're going to, uh, you're going to see there, there's going to be a lot more. There's going to be uh, more, probably more shirts. There's going to be some annual pass holder stuff, possibly some magic bands, some some glasses that you can drink, some Pandora stuff. They usually have some stuff, some collector stuff, more pins. You know, there's going to be a lot more stuff. Uh, I forgot magnets. They have magnets there too, usually. So guys, there's going to be a lot more stuff. So if you guys look at it and say, eh, I'm not interested in any of this. Guys, I would suggest at least trying to get into the virtual queue if you can. If, you, if you're going to come later in the day and you don't want to wait around, just come when it opens up and you can check out what they have left and go from there. So the course maps came out also, and so we're going to take a look at those right now. I'm going to go over them in detail a little bit later, but you can see the start and the finish. Uh, they're both in Epcot, so the 5K is basically just in Epcot. The 10K does uh, just circle around. It brings us down towards where Hollywood Studios is, and we go through the boardwalk and finish off at Epcot. And the half marathon is basically the start where we do the 5K, but we just come around, run a little bit longer before we get to Hollywood Studios and then to Epcot. So basically, we start and finish basically in the same areas that we've been doing before. We kind of knew was coming, our change is coming. There is rumblings that they can change, but as of now, we're going to be starting and stopping in the same place. So guys, we're going to be going over the digital event guide now, and I'm just going to go over the whole thing. I've read over it a couple of times, guys, and I'm going to just bring out some stuff that I think is important. There's stuff that I'm just going to kind of blow by. Uh, a lot of these things is repetitive, so I'm just going to go by, but let's get to that. First page is the welcome page, and it is from Adam Bell, Vice President of Run Disney, basically. He gives us some welcome. When we get to the top, we can actually click on weekend events so we can take a look at this and the first one we're going to click on is going to be the run disney health and fitness expo we're going to take a look at what is in this uh in this folder right here so when the first thing we notice right here is the official times of the expo so guys 
Uh, go here for the official times. It's going to be very, very easy. It's also going to be on the page, but we have a bunch of tabs. The virtual queue process is the first one. So it's going to be virtual queue for the first day of merchandise at, uh, at the Run Disney Expo. So it's only for the first day, and it might even be for only half the day. The key thing here is that it is going to open up at 7.30 a.m. So at 7.30 a.m., make sure that you get onto My Disney Experience, get your app, open it up, select your party. Make sure that you select your party. That way you are ready to click in at 7.30. Now we go for the event waivers. This one's going to be something that you should have done already. It actually has a link to the frequently frequently asked questions. So if you haven't signed it yet, you don't know what to do, just click on that. It'll take you to uh, the information that you're going to need. You can email them or you can go to the expo and get that taken care of. Now race, bib, uh, and shirt pickup. That is going to be, and we're going to go over where you pick it up in a little bit, but this is going to be uh, where you pick it up. And the main thing is going to be is you cannot pick up the race bib for any other runner unless they are a minor, guys. So just remember that one. All right, so now we're going to go to the Expo Transportation. A lot of you have asked, and the Expo Transportation hours are right here. They're 30 minutes before, 30 minutes after. Sometimes they get there a little bit earlier, guys. So, and then we're going to do the minivan. This is just very, very easy if you want to take a lift, all right? So now we got the, the map of uh, Wide World of Sports. So we can take a look at all the stuff that's being, uh, all the stuff that's gonna be in every single one of the of the places. So there's gonna be three different uh, places. One where you can pick up your merchandise, the other one where you pick up your bib, and the third one where the actual expo is, and you pick up your shirts there. Uh, so guys, uh, one thing I wanted to stress, uh, if uh, you have any problems with your after party, you're going to go to the box office, post race, party, runner, ticket solutions, and international guest pickup. So this is where you're going to pick up your your tickets in case you did not get them. So let's go back uh, over here to the map. This is the Advent Health Arena. So it's very, very simple. This is where you're going to pick up your bib. The Athletic Center, that's going to be where. And look at all the vendors that they have there. And the last one is going to be the Field House. And this is where the merchandise is. And this is, uh, again, this is gonna be the first one that you're gonna see. So now we're gonna return to the top of the page, weekend events, we're gonna go to the 5K. Now the first tab is starting group opening and closing times. This is an important one to know, especially to get to your corrals. Make sure that you get to your corrals in time because if you look at it, it is a time when it's gonna close. They're gonna close the corral, so you're gonna have to get into a, a further back corral. I'll go over this one a little bit later uh, in, in detail when it comes to each one of the corrals. But as you can see, you have a time to get to your corral before it closes. Opening is usually um, simple. Race etiquette, we did a whole video on race etiquette. So go over this one. And of course, I invite you to watch mine, which is more in detail. We got some reminders here. Uh, this is going over for drivers. This is going for security. You're gonna have to pass through security. So guys, remember that you that you know you can't have any kind of weapons or anything like that. So now we're gonna click over here. We're gonna look at this. Participants must arrive at the Epcot parking lot by four. All right, that's important. Now spectator viewing. I'm gonna go over this at the very end, but again, it tells you how to get there, what to do. Uh, to me, it's a little bit different from uh, previous years because it basically only talks about Epcot. And then we switch over to transport uh, transportation information. It's going to be basically the same as before. So the only thing here, well, actually here, it tells you when they're going to pick you up, 3 to 5 uh, a.m. And then the buses start going from 6.30 to 8.30 uh, a.m. Guys, if you, you're not going to get stuck there, you can just walk over to Epcot and take uh, take a, a, a shuttle there. But there won't be a monorail or Disney Skyliner transportation during the Wine and Dine Half Marathon weekend. That's very important to know. Guys, the buses are going to be closer anyway. So uh, you're not gonna get to do all the stops or anything. So the buses are best, the best method. We're not gonna go over the minivan. The photo pass, I'm gonna go over this and I'm gonna leave this out for a little while because it has the 16 digits and I'm gonna go over it again. The 16 digits, the three, the five X's are actually your bib number. So make sure that you may, you copy this, uh, take a photo shot, something. And so you have this to uh, make sure that you get your pictures. Now we got the 5K course. As promised before, I am gonna go over it a little bit more into detail. So we're gonna start off at the parking lot on the uh, 
the, uh, uh, and according to this map on the north side of the of the map we're gonna go down it's the first mile is basically just open area there will be characters music stuff like that we're gonna go into part of uh, actually we're gonna go into world showcase uh, we finished that in my marker 2 and then we run uh, to the towards the front of Epcot but we exit in the side and we uh, finish in the front of Epcot so that is the uh, the map here's the event uh map i'm sorry this is the the epcot lot so uh so you guys can see where you can park you can see where spectators can be so forth and so on and in a little bit we're going to be able to see uh a little bit more of a close-up on this so yeah so event parking you know your start groups your reunion area this is all important uh, again you see on the bottom left event entry that's where they're going to be the uh there's that's what the security is going to be and this is a little bit better picture of the start groups or the reunion area where the post pickup is uh, after the run so that red area to the right that's where the buses are going to be lined up they're going to be one through ten just go through whatever your resort is and you can get on your bus now let's go and check out the 10k the 10k the start group times are going to be a little bit different so guys again Make sure that you know this information so that you know the last possible time you can get to your corral before it closes. If not, you're gonna have to go to a further back corral. If you get there late, you're, they're gonna put you in the last corral. So if you notice, there's gonna be uh, five corrals, so that's there. We won't go over running etiquette or anything. We're gonna go over spectator viewing because uh, just to make sure that there's nothing new. But guys, it's the same thing as the race before. So spectator viewing, I would ask at the expo. Live results, okay, so there's gonna be some live tracking, and I'm gonna go over this again in a little bit, but if you click on this link, right now it has not gone live yet. So uh, once it does go live, it usually is just uh, X, used to be Twitter or email. Transportation information, here is some information. It's basically the same, just uh, maybe a little bit expanded afterward uh, as a 5K, So, but it's basically gonna be the same, so guys, um, make sure that you understand when you can take the shuttles. Here is a 10K map. Now we go the opposite way. So we start, we run away from Epcot. So we don't start off in Epcot, which is not a bad thing. We're gonna run down to the left side. We're gonna do a couple of loops. So we're, there is gonna be a little bit of an incline. We're gonna come around, we're gonna hit Hollywood Studios, but it's gonna be kind of like the outskirts of Hollywood Studios going into the boardwalk. We're gonna run to the boardwalk this is if you can get to the boardwalk this is a great place to spectate and we go into epcot and we finish off in epcot so this is a pretty cool little run and the maps the other maps are basically the same as the ones before so we'll take a look at them real quick but it's going to be basically the exact same thing for the 5k the 10k and the half we go to the top uh, to get to the event guide and uh, weekend event i'm sorry and we're going to go to the half marathon so now we're up to the half marathon again the the start group opening and closing times i'm gonna make this a little bit wider so you guys know because this is a time especially if you're doing all three races you're a little bit tired you're gonna get there a little bit later so uh you're gonna you're gonna want to get there a little bit later sometimes so guys look at the times make sure that you're there on time before your corral closes if your corral closes you're going to have to go further back until you get to the last corral. So even if you're in corral A, you're a major runner, you're faster, you're going to still have to start in E if you get there after a certain amount of time. So guys, be uh, be aware of that, okay? this It's going to be the same thing. I'm looking at spectator viewing just to see if there's any other information uh, when it comes to viewing on the boardwalk, and there's not, guys. I would ask at the expo if you can get there because it's a great place to look at that live results it's the same as the other one the only thing is there's not the link isn't live over here so i think they're still working on that here goes a different transport transportation information so over here we now start at 2 30 and uh not sure why they do that uh, maybe there's more runners uh we'll, we'll find out later on but anyways so the start time is 2 30 then it goes a little bit later it goes all the way to 10 30 guys so make uh, be aware of this all right, so these are the road closures. Those of you who are driving or have family members that are gonna be driving uh, to the run, okay? So be aware of this, and it's, it gives you all the information. I'm not gonna go over the, the, the specifics, but it gives you the information on a, approximate times 
when these are open, uh, when these are closed. I'm sorry, guys. And uh, Disney Photo Pass, I'm going to go over that again. I'm going to put this up again because a lot of people, I know that this is going to be one of the questions that their people are going to ask over and over and over. How do I link it? What do I do? You're going to go to your uh, Photo Pass, your Memory Maker, and you're going to put in that number. Uh, the Half Marathon Map. So this is going to be a little bit interesting. We're going to start off and we're going to go, it seems like the similar way that we started off the 5K, but this time we are going to enter World Showcase and we are going to come around and go down the boardwalk, go all the way to Hollywood Studios. We run a lot more in Hollywood Studios than we used to. This has only been the last few runs that we do there. Now we're going to come out. Now it's, uh, and somebody already says, I'm not liking miles uh, uh starting about six seven eight we're gonna go up you know there's not gonna there's gonna be open area they will have characters they will have some entertainment we run all the way up again these little semi-circles there's gonna be a little bit of an incline all the way to 11 once we get there there is gonna be more characters and we enter into epcot and of course we finish at the same finish line as we have been doing in our past the 5k and the 10k so the other maps are basically the same as that we've seen before so we're gonna go on the weekend event we're gonna keep going uh, we are gonna click on the post race party so uh, so we've got some cool information here we start uh, at 5 a.m. you can start lining up at either of the two entrances so um, back in, in the back or in the front you can start lining up at 5 they start letting you in there's a few places here where you can go get your band. You're gonna need a band. So that's gonna be something that uh, you're gonna need. So starting at nine o'clock, you're gonna need that band to get on the uh, the rides. And the rides are listed here. So test track, uh, journey to imagination, I'll let you read them, guys. Transportation information, um, important information. I'm sorry, this is gonna be important. So just make sure that you read this. You're going to need an ID. Remember, you're going to need an ID to get your, your post-party picture. So make sure that you got all that. Uh, the $15 gift card that's coming, and I'll go over that in a little bit too. But that's coming October or starting on October 24th. So make sure that you, um, that you check your email so that way you have that $15 gift card. If you signed up for the challenge or if you signed up for the, the, uh, the uh, half marathon. But it's right here. You'll receive a $15 promo card. So that's pretty cool. So um, transportation information. Again, they're going to be transportation going throughout to all the resorts uh, that are on property until the end of the party. So that's going to be easy. The minivan we already know about. So we're going to click back on weekend events. We're going to come back. Important information. So there's going to be event waivers. So this is something that you should have already done. Co costume guidelines. I've gone over this a few times. The main one to to remember is you can't layer clothes. You can't layer something that sticks out, okay? Uh, we got the starting group and ending and closing times. We got reminders, so rem these are the reminders. Go over these, uh, I, I've gone over it a few times and I'll post anything that, and I'll stress stuff that I think is important at the very end of the run. If there's anything else, I kind of look over it. I, I kind of expand it and I'll go over it. But guys, um, there's a lot of information here on reminders. Uh, click down, look at everything. The flag guidance. This is going to be uh, guidelines. I'm sorry, flag guidelines. There are going to be three by uh, three feet by five feet, and it can only be a four foot pole, guys. You can you can actually hold it in your hand, or you, you can have a something a harness that holds it. But guys, anything bigger than that, you cannot run with the flag. So make sure that the flag is not that big. Uh, the medical. Uh, this is Advent Healthcare at Medical. And you notice that we have some medical stops on the, on the course, so that's there. Weather, this is gonna be very important. Uh, so the different kinds of flags, the green flag means we're fine. It usually means it's cooler, it's nice, not high humidity. Yellow flag, it's, uh, the conditions are not as great, so it's gonna be a little bit humid. Uh, once we get to red flag and black flag, and which I have done both of them, they can uh, cut the, sh the, the course short or they can cancel a run. Race day information. This is going to be important also. Uh, gear check. Uh, gear check. A lot of people have been asking. You're going to have to use the bag that they gave you. You cannot use a bag that you brought on your own. It has to be clear and they're going to put a sticker on it. So remember the bag that your shirts are in when you pick up 
your bib and uh, actually you pick up your bib then you're going to go pick up your shirts at the expo they're going to give you a, a bag make sure that you have that right there there's going to be some food and beverages there's not going to be a lot so just remember that if you want to uh, take your own you can lost and found so in case you lose articles of clothing you throw them off you accidentally throw them off there's going to be places where you can find them okay guys uh so post race information uh this is going to be important there too the race results they will give me results at nighttime so later in the day in the in the, in the towards the night you're going to be able to see your results online and you'll be able to get your finisher certificate and the community impact and so this has to do more with the the charities that we're running for the representing charity so if you want to read over the information i always invite people to to look and listen because uh these charities they do a good job of of, of promoting what they're trying to do and let's click over to the uh, second harvest so this is a charity the second harvest if you want to click on look at the videos i invite you to they're going to show us the videos anyway uh, usually the morning of or we're going to see a, a couple of these videos are going to be representatives from the company what they do is amazing um, this is this is a good charity the second harvest uh food bank of central florida then uh, the last thing we're going to look at we're going to look at the the booths and these are all the booths that are going to be there so one by one they might have some specials so i would go and look at them the one that, uh, i like this one with the the uh, uh the metal you know it, it, they engrave something there so you could hold some metal they got places so you can actually display your medals is a really really cool um the socks actually look pretty cool that's going to be one that i'm going to go look at but uh uh, th th if you if you forgot any of your running gear they got uh, uh, fit to run is there so they're gonna be able to to have some some running gear for you so just remember if you forgot your socks which happened to me once I had to go and buy socks there and they usually have some good specials if you're an annual pass holder or DVC member make sure that you let them know so that way if there is any kind of discounts you can get them so guys, I talked about it a little bit and, and going on social media, there's a lot of misinformation going out there. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things that I, I, I hope uh, a lot of you guys already know, if not, try to help people out. The first one is there's no transfer of bibs. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where a week before you break your, 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 your foot, a family emergency happens, and God bless you, I hope nothing happens, but something happens, you have to contact Run Disney themselves, guys. Posting it on social media, guys, we don't know the answers. Um, people will answer uh, uh, with their experiences, and sometimes their experiences can be different from what Disney, Run Disney is gonna do. So sometimes they told them, no, you can't do it, so people will say, no, you can't do it. But then you call them up, you send them your information, all of a sudden they say, oh, we're gonna give you partial refund, or whatever it's gonna be. So, and then there's times when the person did get a partial refund, and then you're gonna contact Run Disney and say, sorry, that, that's nothing we can do. So guys, my advice is, Contact Run Disney uh, directly. Uh, do not listen to any of us when it goes down to the, me included uh, and just contact them and let's see what they tell you. Another thing that I've been reading a lot is that people are saying, oh yeah, uh, you if you can't go pick up your bib, uh, go ahead and, and make copies of your, your ID and stuff, uh, your ID and the, and the registration form and somebody can pick it up for you. That is not true. The only case that that is true is if it's a minor and that's the only place uh, that's the only case that's true but besides that they're not going to let you pick up somebody else's bid if you cannot make it to uh, to the bid pickup at the expo and but you still plan on running you're going to get there late something happens whatever it is contact run disney themselves what i would do is get there to the expo go to the information they may have the bibs there they may not so remember this Everything that they have in writing is that you cannot transfer. It's non-negotiable if you don't show up. If you if you don't show up to pick up your big, you can't run, so forth and so on. But it's not an obsolete. So you have to go there live, go talk to them, and see if you can get your bib uh, that morning of. Okay, guys. Uh, so uh, out of experience, I've never had to pick up my bib the day before. But last year, there was a bunch of delays in the, the planes because of the weather. And actually, the Disney announced that they will, they did have bid pickup the morning of, and that line was super long. I remember recording it, it's in one of my videos, guys. But guys, again, I go back to talk to Run Disney themselves, and uh, don't, don't just do whatever uh, somebody says to do online, and then all of a sudden, you are stuck in a situation that you don't wanna be in. 
The next thing I wanted to cover is uh, resellers, and everybody says resellers uh, are gone or they're still out there and stuff. They're still out there, and, and they're going to be out there no matter what. I think what, what's been going down with the virtual queue, it's slowing them down, but they're still out there. And part of the resellers is us. Uh, we have started to resell, and I have seen people online, and I thought about it long, long time. I go on my runs and I think about it because people, runners, are now saying, hey, I will buy stuff for you if you donate to my charity or if you give me this much because I'm club run Disney and so forth and so on. My thoughts are this, if you, per if you permit it, you promote it. So guys, I, I, I understand guys who are running charities and stuff. I, I'm running for a charity at, uh, for the Walt Disney World Marathon weekend, so I had to do the, the uh, fundraising myself, did a whole video on that. But guys, uh, when you think about it logically is, if you were in the, the, the opposite shoes, as you were in those people's shoes that you know had to go in a little bit later and you know you pre-bought something, you'd probably be upset too. So guys, I, I urge you to think long and hard before you decide, hey, I'm going to, I'm gonna buy some stuff and go you know, and, and uh, raise money for my charity or because I, 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 you know, I splurged and got run Disney, it's gonna help me pay off for these runs and stuff. Just think to yourself long and hard, would I like it done to me? And again, I'm not gonna give you an answer and say yes, no, that's up to you guys, but I, I myself am not doing it. Do I do I see, sit here and see like of my friend that can't make it, my family can't, member can't make it till later on today, would I be able to buy her stuff? Yeah, that's a little bit different situation. If you're doing it for reselling because you're moving a little bit of profit, that's a little bit different. So guys, uh, with that said, let's move on to the next topic. Okay guys, the Pacer groups were announced and uh, so let's take a look. We can see on top that they have the pace from eight minutes all the way down to 16 minutes and they have their intervals. So some of them are 90, 30, 60, 30. So guys, uh, you can go and talk to the Pacer groups uh, there at the expo, they'll be there. So you can just go and talk to them, find out basically what corral they're gonna be in. So that way you can you know go there and meet up with them. I've already gone over um, the running etiquette. I'll, I'll just dress this pretty quickly. I'll go over this pretty quickly. If you're gonna be running in the groups, the groups can get very, very large. Again, stay to one side so you can let the people go uh, go around you. But guys, uh, even the the people, the race, the, the, the pacers themselves, the, the people in charge are basically telling people, let's move over to one side, but a lot of times they clog up and you're trying your hardest to get around them. So guys, just be mindful, make yourselves a, a, a column, you know, like a, a straight line as much as possible. But guys, that's, uh, um, those are the race pacers. And one last thing about the race pacers. The last pacers are basically the balloon ladies. They're not listed on there because uh, they are the last ones to start. So they start later uh, later on after these pace groups have gone. So they are the last, uh, the last ones to start. So guys, we did get an email about the after party tickets, guys. So guys, it does say to bring the physical ticket. So a lot of you guys have been linking it or trying to link it to your My Disney Experience. It's not a bad idea, I do that too. But I always take my, my physical copy just in case. Remember guys, it's a rule. They don't enforce it very much a lot of times because they want to get everybody quick. You know, you just go and you scan your magic band and all of a sudden you're in. Uh, but guys, take it just in case guys because if you get there and they say, no, we don't, we're only taking the physical uh, ticket, that you only have yourself to blame because they did send an email and it did state in bold letters that you must take the physical. You need to take the physical ticket. Another thing that I want to stress, we went over it on uh, when we went over the digital event guide, but virtual queue opens up at 7.30 this year. Remember, and I'm going to do the next video I'm going to have, I'm going to explain how to do it myself real quick because I've done it for so many years. The important thing is going to be, and I said it before and I'll say it again, get your family and friends, get, those, get that, that confirm your party and make sure you get it because every single one is going to need a QR code. You walk up there and there's five family members and you have three QR codes, they're only going to let three of you in. You can argue all you want, they're not going to let you in, okay? Uh, you can ask, you know, but but again, uh, just think to yourself, do it the right way and get everybody in. Another one I feel like I have to stress is the starting line, the opening and closing of the uh, of the corrals. And I, I, you know, we went over that and I'm going to go over that again. So let's take a look at that. So for the 5K, you can actually see that the start group closes uh, for group A at 445, and you can get, get a point of reference from there. For the uh, 10K, it's at 440, and check this one out. For the half marathon, it closes at, again, 440. So guys, make sure that you get to your corral in time. 
So guys, again, I'm stressing this because earlier this year, and I know I said I'm not gonna go over it again, but I'm gonna go over it real quick. Some people got there late. They argued that they wanted to go uh, uh, to, to their corral, which was a, a, a earlier corral. They couldn't because again, they missed the cutoff time. Again, it's not the cast member's fault. It got to the point where they actually threw a gate at a cast member. I remember sitting there and, they, and I had to be restrained myself because I sat there going like, that's an assault. You're going, you're, you're crossing the line, guys. It's not their, their fault. So guys, be mindful. What you try to do is whatever uh, corral that you can get to, try to get to the front. If it really means that much to you, try to get to the front as, as, as much as possible. So you could, because remember there's corrals and then there's waves within the corrals. So try to get to the, 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 the front wave or uh, as much as you can. But guys, do not cross that line. Another thing I want to stress is that if you look at the course maps, and we've looked, uh, looked at them a couple of times, is there's no character stops on there. So uh, where are the character stops? The character stops are random, but they're not as random as people think. Usually we know where they run. Uh, when we run, we know where they're going to be. You know, it's been historically, they, they, they are at one place or another. And guys, the only thing I can suggest for you is, guys, I record the runs. So guys, go and look at the runs so you can get more or less an idea of where the characters are going to be. But remember, it's not an exact thing. So guys, if they were there last year, it might not be this year. Last year might have been one character. This year might be a separate character. And usually because it's wine and dine and, you know, again, we have villains, we have genie, their characters can and will change. With that said, if you look at the map, uh, mom marker 12-ish, we should be right around Journey to Imagination. So I do think that there is a strong possibility, especially now that Figgy is a character, that we might be able to get Figgy with it at mom marker 12. Another thing that people aren't taking into consideration, and please do, I'm gonna put it on social media and everything, is there's gonna be a time change from Saturday to Sunday, guys. So guys, if you, you remember, you're gonna get an extra hour of sleep, so uh, the worst case scenario is you get just gonna be really early. That's it, uh, guys. But you know, take advantage of that extra hour of sleep because we get up early. Uh, but there is gonna be a time change that weekend. Okay, so we got photo pass information and we got, they always give, uh, give you si uh, 16 digits and you put that into your memory maker, your photo pass, and you're gonna be able to get the pictures with your bibs. That's why it's very, they tell you over and over and I tell you over and over make sure that your bib is clear because if it's covered then you're not going to get your photos guys you got the photo tents the the green uh, the green tents are all, all over the place you got your before and after your character pictures make sure that bib is showing guys so uh, and I'm gonna show you guys right now and then I'm gonna add it to the very end of the video guys the um, the number so you can write them down for the 5k the 10k and the half and then what you're gonna do is just put in those 11 numbers. Yes, I said it right, 11 numbers. The last five are your bib numbers. If your bib is four numbers, just add a zero before that. But on the most part, they should all be five numbers. So that'll add up to 16 numbers, guys, and you will get your photo pass. By the way, I still see a lot of people selling their photo pass right now. I have friends of mine who are doing that to raise money for charity. That is, to me, acceptable just because it, you know, Disney has not uh, put a clamp on it. They might somewhere in the, in the future. But guys, if you're looking to do that, to donate to a charity and directly, that's a good way of doing that. So a question uh, that's been asked a lot is about spectators. And spectators, they didn't give a lot of uh, information that they did in the past like you know there are other places to watch they only gave Epcot and Epcot was the only one that was on there so and it's very very easy if you go to Epcot during the runs uh, the runners have to go a certain way but there's a place for the spectators to go they go all the way around they go to the front and they spectate at the end there's a grandstand you can go uh, right along the, the, the line you can sit there and you can or you can sit and stand and you can cheer us on for spectating and that's great but guys what about on the course on the course, it, it, it specifically says do not just go on, uh, randomly on the course. I wouldn't do that either just in case Disney has security that comes and grabs you. So it's not a good thing to do that. Uh, the place that you can for the, the 10K and the half, uh, you should be, well, there's going to be spectators, is on the boardwalk. And I would ask them at the expo, is there any way to get to the boardwalk that early in the morning? And again, look at the, the, 
the best ways of doing it where you're not going to get yourself in trouble. If you can get it okay to take a lift and get on one of the boardwalk hotels and walk over, that's great. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're staying on there, you're just going to walk out of your room and go down there. But guys, stay within the rules, guys. We love our spectators. Uh, I think you guys are awesome. I thank you guys. I always say hi, or I try to say hi, guys, but uh, stay within the rules. And a couple of things that have not been announced. Number one is the running tracker. They kind of said about uh, said it, but it's not live yet. And actually, I took a picture so you guys can see. So once it becomes live, they're usually, you can have it emailed or uh, you can go through uh, X, which was formerly, uh, or formerly known as tr uh, Twitter is now X. So those are the two, uh, the two avenues that you can go. Now I do know that there's avenues where you can put in a, a um, email address and I have to look them up and if I find them, I'm gonna put them on social media, but you can put an email address and that email address will actually uh, prompt, uh, pro prompt text so I know there's one for Verizon I think there's one for AT&T so guys I, I believe it's uh, your phone number at I think it's vzn.com or .net or something like that and then all of a sudden you'll get prompted but guys uh, go to your local providers ask them they'll let you know and that way you can get text also so other things that are coming is uh, your gift card your $15 gift card that is if you signed up for the challenge or the half you will be getting a $15 gift card uh, and that will be emailed to you starting October 24th. But if you look at their, what they said, it's starting October 24th. So it could come any time after that also. Guys, if you haven't gotten it yet, when you go to the expo, just go to Runner's Relations and they will take care of that for you. And the other thing that has been announced or you, uh, we read also is October 30th is when they start doing the expo passes. If you have not gotten that email, no big deal. Just go to your registration. If it's still showing your registration, guys, it's gonna say Expo Pass, you're gonna click on it. You can actually take a screenshot of it so you can show it to them there, or you can print it out. I usually do both just in case they say, oh, I can't see it, then I have it uh, printed out. So that's the way that that works. So guys, it just seems like this year there's so much more excitement, I, I think, a nervousness. I think that we have a lot of new runners, which is awesome, amazing, welcome. Thank you guys for, for signing up. You guys are gonna have a blast. So guys, without further ado, I'm gonna just wish you a happy, happy day. Uh, as usual, I'm gonna say what I usually say is create a magical day, create a magical run, and guys, see you sooner than later.